Hey guys, tomorrow we will be having our unit one exam, which means that today we are going to be having a review. If you look at the screen, you'll notice that one side of the review says we do and one side says you do. So what I will be doing today is going over the side that says we do. We are gonna do this all together as a class and I'm gonna leave the right side that says you do blank and these will be practice problems for you to guys to work out at home. So let's get started with the first one. It asks, what is the solution to that equation? So if they're asking for the solution, they want us to solve for D, which means that D needs to be all by itself. So I would start by distributing the two outside the parentheses. That gives me 2D plus 10. Then I still have minus one, but it wasn't in the parentheses, so we're just gonna bring it down, equals three. Our next step is to combine like terms. So you should notice that on the left side, 2D is the only one with D, but plus 10 and minus one are both regular numbers that I can combine. So that would give me plus nine equals three. Now I wanna move the nine to the other side of the equal sign. And we're gonna do that by doing the opposite operation. So since right now it's plus, we're going to subtract. And that gives me 2D equals negative six. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is divide by two. So I ran out of space, I'm gonna write it over here to the side. Or actually I can fit it below. D equals negative six divided by two gives me negative three. Okay, let's do another example. So what is the solution to, and then there's our equation. So always, always our first step is to distribute. So starting with negative five times four, that gives me negative 20 X, negative five times negative two. So be careful, a negative times a negative is a positive. So plus 10 equals, now same thing on the other side. Negative two times three gives me negative six. Negative two times six gives me negative 12 X. Okay, but now you should notice that there are X's on both sides of the equal sign. And I want it to only be on one side. So I'm gonna move this 12 X by doing the opposite operation. So I'm going to add. So that gives me negative 20 plus 12 would give me negative eight X plus 10 equals negative six. Now I need to move the 10, opposite operation would be to subtract. So eight X equals negative 16. And then last step is to divide by eight. So I'm gonna write this to the side, X equals negative 16 divided by eight is negative two. Okay, and one more example of solving an equation. What is the solution to negative 14, well, that whole equation? So we're gonna start by doing distribution. Negative 14 times three is negative 42a. Negative 14 times six is negative 84 equals, now distribute on the other side. 12 times six is 72. 12 times negative four is negative 48a, and then bring down my 12. Okay, on the left side, that's gonna stay the same for right now. But on the right side, I have two numbers that I can combine. So 72 plus 12 gives me 84, and then I still have my minus 48a. Okay, I have A's on both sides of the equal sign, so I wanna move it to where it's only on one side. So I'm gonna add 48A to both sides, which leaves me with 6A minus 84 equals 84, and that cancels. Okay, 
Now I'm going to add 84 to both sides. So we're going to get a big number. I have 6a equals 168. Okay, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write this to the side over here. We stopped with 6a equals 168. Right? Yeah. And last step is to divide by 6. Okay, and when you do that, you should get a equals 28. Okay, the next thing that we covered was solving inequalities. So it's still the same as solving an equation, it's just now you have a less than or greater than symbol. So to start here on this one, I see x's on both sides of the inequality sign. So I'm gonna fix it to where the x's are only on the left by adding three x to both sides. So that leaves me with negative two x minus three is greater than six. Okay, now let's move that three by doing the opposite operation. So we're going to add. And now I have negative two x is greater than nine. Okay, then last step is to divide by negative two. So be careful here, when you divide by a negative number, your inequality sign is gonna flip. So we have x, but now it's greater than negative nine over two. That would give you a decimal, so it's better just to leave it as a fraction. Okay, let's do another inequality. What is the solution set to? And then here we go. So we're gonna solve for x and make sure that it's by itself at the end. So starting on the left, that one is gonna stay the same, but this negative two needs to get multiplied in. So that's minus two x, then negative two times one is minus two, is less than three x minus six. Okay, then on the left side, I have some terms that I can combine. I have the first one, one, minus two. Those can go together. So one minus two gives me negative one, and then I still have my minus two x is greater than three x minus six. Now you should notice that there's x's on both sides, so we're gonna fix that by moving this three over. So we're gonna subtract three x which gives me negative one minus five x is less than negative six. Let's add one to both sides. So I'm running out of space, I'm gonna move over to the other side. That leaves me with negative five x is less than negative five. Okay, then we're gonna divide by our negative five. And again, it came up. If you're dividing by a negative number, you're gonna flip the sign. So I have x is greater than positive one. Okay, the next problem that we have is it's already worked out for us, but they made a mistake. So we wanna see where did they make this mistake? So it says Ms. Rojas is solving the equation below. Where does her first mistake appear? So we know that the first step that you do should always be to distribute. So this 2x needs to go to both things that is inside of the parentheses. So let's take a look at step one and see if that's what they did. So I see the two, so that matches with this two. Two times x would give me two x, so so far so good. And then two times four would give me eight. So, uh-oh, that's where the problem is. She wrote a two instead of an eight. So her mistake appears already in step one. So if I were to explain and say what should have her correct step be, she needed to multiply two to everything inside the parentheses. 
parentheses. Okay, the next one, here we have a word problem. A taxi company charges a fee of $3 for using the taxi and 75 cents for each mile driven. How far can you travel if you have $54 in your wallet? Okay, so they want to know how far we can travel. See how far? And when we're looking at this problem, it says miles. So we're going to use the letter M to represent mile. Okay, so let's see how much they're charging us. So they always have a fee of $3. And then after that, they're going to charge you for 75 cents for each mile that you drive. So 75 cents M. And you have $54 in your pocket, so equals 54. So now all we're going to do is solve for M. Subtract 3 from both sides. That gives me 75 cents M equals 51. Then we'll divide by the 75 cents. So M equals 68 miles. So how far can you go? 68 miles. Okay, the next one is another word problem. A taxi charges a flat rate of $1.75 plus an additional 65 cents per mile. If Erica has at most $10 to spend on a cab drive, how far could she travel? And see how at most is in bold? This is not going to be an equal sign. This is going to be an inequality. And again, they're asking about how far she can go. And in the problem, it says mile. So again, I'm going to use M to mean mile. So if she has at most $10, she cannot spend anything over that. So she has to stay under 10. So we are going to use the less than symbol. But if she has $10, can she spend exactly $10? Well, sure she can. She can spend everything she has. So in this case, we need the or equal to. Okay, so now let's go back and figure out the first part of this inequality. They charge a flat rate of $1.75 and then an additional 65 cents per mile. So now it's our job to solve for M. Subtract from both sides. That leaves me with 65M is less than or equal to 825. Then divide by the 65 cents. So now I have M is less than or equal to, it's a decimal, 12.7. Okay, but this is the real world. And remember we talked about this yesterday. When you are saying something like this, you can't just leave it like that. You have to round it, and you always, always, always round down. So I know that 0.7 makes you think you could round up, but in this case, round down. So M is less than or equal to 12 miles. So she can go at most 12 miles. Okay, then we had literal equations. So these are equations where you're solving for a certain letter in here. So I have the equation CX minus DY equals E, and they want me to solve for Y. So I'm going to start by highlighting that. And we know we're done when Y is by itself. So that's CX. I want to move it to the other side, but I do that by doing the opposite operation. I know it doesn't have anything in front of it, but if it doesn't have anything here, that means it's positive. So we're going to subtract. So that leaves me with negative dy equals e minus cx. OK, but y is still not by itself. So I'm going to divide by negative d. And that leaves me with y equals, I'm going to put the negative sign on the top instead. So negative e plus cx all over d. 
wise by itself, so I know that I am done. Okay, and just one more example of that. It says solve for y, 2x minus 3y equals 8. It's the same thing. I'll know that I'm done when that y is by itself. So I'm going to start by subtracting 2x from both sides. And that leaves me with negative 3y equals, I'm going to start with the negative 2x, so negative 2x. And then that 8 was positive, so I know I can write plus 8. Then we are going to divide by negative 3, the whole thing. So now I have y equals negative 2x plus 8 over negative 3. So we're going to simplify this a little bit more because it's technically two fractions in one. So if you notice... I'm going to start with this part right here. So I have y equals negative 2 divided by negative 3. A negative divided by a negative is going to make it positive, so 2 thirds x. And now the other part of the equation, this right here, positive 8 divided by negative 3. So that's going to make it turn negative. And 8 over 3 doesn't simplify, so just leave it as 8 over 3. And that is your final answer. Okay, guys, so that's the entire review. That's everything that's going to be on the test tomorrow. And like I said, I am going to post this PDF onto Schoology so that you can try the right side column on your own. If you have any questions, you could email me or send me a message through Schoology so I can help you out. Okay, bye, guys.